The era of colonization is long gone, the era where US and European powers tell anyone what to do, and they will jump to do it without asking questions is long gone. The ability to urging full compliance to every issue cannot be accepted by China. China is the largest manufacturing hub in the world, and European and Americans are aware of the power of China. Today European economy is an important need for China middle class and purchase. They are even considering offering China a visa-free visit to Europe to boost their economy, but the system of requesting full compliance and blaming China for every issue will not be accepted by China. Stay with us to the end to understand how China is dominating European and US economy. Hello and welcome back to Innovative Czech YouTube channel, where we delve into the innovative and transformative projects changing our world. If you're new to the channel and enjoy learning about innovation stories around the world, you've come to the right place. Please subscribe, like, and comment to help boost our videos on YouTube. The US and HA has adopted a confrontational stance towards China, urging compliance and cooperation in various economic and political arenas. This approach emerges amidst worsening economic conditions in Europe, which have prompted criticism of US policies towards China. In an age where global interconnectivity is paramount, the tendency to blame China for various global issues appears to be a default strategy, particularly for the US, now increasingly for the ES2. This blame game overlooks the remarkable economic strides made by China, notably its burgeoning middle class, the growth of China's middle class, from 3.1 of the population to over 50 in less than two decades, represents a significant shift in global economic dynamics. An additional 60 million Chinese citizens are expected to join the middle class by 2030, equating to a population size similar to that of France, presenting immense trade and economic opportunities. Just a quick reminder to hit the like button below. YouTube has been restricting my videos a lot recently because of bots, so your like does help out this video massively in terms of the algorithm in YouTube. However, rather than capitalizing on these opportunities, Europe seems more inclined to antagonize China, often portraying it as an antagonist in a manner reminiscent of a Marvel movie. A key issue in focus is the EIA's demand for China to provide fair market access and address concerns over sanctions evasion. The Eurozone, grappling with its own economic challenges, is particularly keen on ensuring a level playing field. European industries are experiencing a downturn with both manufacturing and service sector performance indices, indicating contraction, signaling potential recessionary pressures. Europe's economic resilience now hinges on external trade, particularly with large economies like the continent's luxury goods and automotive sectors, in particular, are in dire need of robust Chinese demand. However, global economic slowdowns and China's shift towards a more domestically focused economy have dampened these prospects. China's GDP components reveal a shift towards domestic consumption driving economic growth, while net exports have decreased. This trend, while seemingly negative for external exporters, is balanced by the vast purchasing power of China's expanding middle class. The International Monetary Fund IMF failed projected China's economy to grow by 5.4 in 23 and 4.6 in 24, outpacing European growth. This growth indicates China's capacity to import goods, but Europe's current trade dynamics with China are complex. The EU harbors concerns about China's potential to dominate market shares in critical European industries. Europe's strategy seems aimed at containing China's economic influence to safeguard its own industries. This approach, however, overlooks the fundamental issue of high manufacturing costs within Europe, which significantly impede its global competitiveness. If you are enjoying this video so far, please don't forget to subscribe, share the video and comment. The trade relationship between the EU and China is marked by a significant trade deficit, which has been exacerbated since the imposition of sanctions on Russian energy. The reduction in competitively priced energy sources has led to increased manufacturing costs in Europe making European products less attractive in the Chinese market. This dynamic is further complicated by Europe's reliance on Chinese raw materials for key industries, making any form of decoupling or trade restrictions potentially detrimental to European economies. The EU's stance towards China also includes demands for adherence to Western sanctions on Russia. However, the interdependence of the Chinese and Russian economies, particularly in the energy sector, makes it highly unlikely that China would comply with such demands. Within Europe itself, there is growing resistance to further sanctions, 
indicating a recognition of the potential economic self-harm such measures could cause. The decision by countries like Italy to reconsider their involvement in China's Belt and Road Initiative ERRI reflects a broader European dilemma while desiring to maintain trade relations with China. Europe is simultaneously cautious of China's growing influence. Italy's soaring trade deficit with China exemplifies the broader European predicament, the need to balance trade relations with geopolitical considerations. The U.S. and EU.S. approach towards China, characterized by demands for compliance and criticism of economic policies, occurs against the backdrop of deteriorating economic conditions in Europe. The complex interplay of trade dynamics, geopolitical strategies, and economic necessities presents a challenging landscape for European nations as they navigate these turbulent waters. The decisions made will have far-reaching implications for global trade and political relations. Sanctioning Russian energy in response to geopolitical events has not only increased energy costs but also impacted the competitiveness of European industries. The reliance on more expensive energy sources has cascaded through various sectors of the economy, increasing production costs and reducing the appeal of European products in global markets, including... If you are enjoying this video so far, please don't forget to subscribe, share the video, and comment. This situation is particularly evident in industries that are energy-intensive, for example. The manufacturing sector, which is a significant contributor to European economies, has faced increased costs, squeezing profit margins and making it difficult to compete internationally. This has led to a decrease in demand for European products, as countries like China find more cost-effective alternatives. Moreover, the European Union's push for decarbonization, while commendable for its environmental focus, adds another layer of complexity to its economic challenges. Transitioning to greener energy sources requires significant investment and time factors that further strain an already struggling economy. In addition to energy concerns, the broader geopolitical strategy of the European Union, particularly its alignment with U.S. policies towards China, has significant trade implications. The U.S. approach to China, marked by a mix of competition and confrontation, has influenced European policies. However, this alignment has its costs by following the U.S. in its stringent stance against China. Europe risks alienating a crucial trade partner. The U.S. and U.S. criticisms of China's economic practices and human rights record, while raising valid concerns, have led to a tense diplomatic environment. This tension complicates trade negotiations and economic cooperation. The EU's dilemma is further exacerbated by internal divisions among member states regarding the approach to China. Some countries within the EU favor a more conciliatory and cooperative approach, recognizing China's economic importance as a trade partner and the need for engagement in global issues like climate change and global health. The impact of these geopolitical and economic strategies is not limited to Europe. Global supply chains, which are deeply interconnected, feel the effects of these policies. The push towards decoupling from China driven by security and economic concerns, has led to disruptions in these supply chains. Industries worldwide have had to adapt to these changes, often at a significant cost. The pandemic has already exposed vulnerabilities in global supply chains, and further disruptions could exacerbate these issues. Moreover, the approach towards China has broader implications for global governance and international relations. The current trajectory suggests a move towards a more fragmented global order, where major powers operate in spheres of influence with limited cooperation. This could lead to a world divided along economic and technological lines, undermining efforts to address global challenges collectively. Europe finds itself at a crossroads. On one hand, it faces internal economic challenges exacerbated by its energy policies and the need to maintain a strong transatlantic alliance with the U.S. On the other hand, it confronts the reality of a rising China, which is an indispensable economic partner and a key player in global affairs. How Europe navigates this complex landscape will have significant implications, not only for its own future, but also for the global order. Thank you for your attention, and I welcome your thoughts and questions on this complex and vital subject. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, please like and share the video and subscribe to get exclusive videos about how phenomenally China is developing and growing its influence. Your subscriptions and likes motivate us to generate more content, so please keep supporting us. Check out this video showing on your screen right now, and I will see you on the other side.